It's over. It's done. Finished. Or is it just beginning? That's the good answer. Coming up. You're tuned in to AfterBuzz TV, the ESPN of TV talk. Now, let the buzz that That's the question. That's not the, the answer. That's the question is, are we at the end or are we at the beginning? It's, you know what? We're six episodes. We, we've been binging this thing. We've been going at it. I hope you guys have been following us along and being able to watch all of these after shows. Is it the end or is it just the beginning? It, the show is all about a circle. It never ends. <laughs> so it's both. It's both. I agree with you 100%. Yeah, it's... It is wild. I'm very excited to talk about why. if we feel closure, how do we think everything played out with Yo Yo? Do we does he does he just stay there forever? Does you know, has he ever put clothes on? So much to talk about on this final episode and after show of Catch Twenty Two, which is Hulu's mini series that we're covering here on After Buzz TV. Thank you guys for watching and following along. I'm your host, Michael Klaus, and of course I'm joined by Linda. Thank you for just being here in your boy, bright, shiny blue, and your smile, and Janine. Hi, thank guys. You. Here we go. You know what? Again, we're like six episodes. We've been binging this thing. I hope everyone watching this is, has been binging, too. But overall thoughts, what do we got? Heartbreaking, powerful, uh, a little shell-shocked from mm-hmm. it. Uh, I need more. I'm a little sad that it's over. Yeah, it definitely left me wanting more. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that was done on purpose to keep it open-minded. I do know that uh, the ending definitely strayed from the book. So it should be interesting where they go from here, Mm. if they go somewhere from here. I'm excited to talk about that. And yeah, as I said at the uh, end of the last after show, it's like it's good to leave you wanting more. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we all want more office. That's why we all want more of our other shows. It's like... You end it too soon, then you're like, you keep talking about it, and you keep talking about it. So that's fantastic. We're going to talk about, obviously, the ending. How, how do we feel with that? We're going to talk about uh, you know Christopher Snowden and his character, because I felt like that was a huge part of the show. Not necessarily him, but like his meaning mm-hmm. and how that kind of tied in. And, and Yossarian's purpose, the ending of And Release, and then the very interesting testicle inspection Th- this episode was m- more painful to me than, than the other ones in a different way. Sure. I don't know. Do you ladies, do you understand that pain? I mean, I, I don't understand it, but I can definitely say I understand why you would have taken it the way do you, you took crin- it. Do you cringe or shift your chair when <laughs> something like that happens? It was no. just me? No, yeah. I mean, we... As ladies, have our own set of issues. Obviously, obviously, I, I hope... will relinquish the ball problems <laughs> to you. The balls are in my court. Is really what you're saying That's exactly on that what one? I'm saying. Yeah, hopefully, uh, it's, <laughs> For if real. there's any they other guys that out there, times ten. Yeah, if any other guys out there, please comment. I mean, we got to stick together on this one because hey, I understand your pain, Michael. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you take one for the team, all right? Steven in the chat. Thank you. Oh my good. Yeah, that was a. I was just like shifting in my chair, moving around. <laughs> but I mean, that's what this whole series did. Kept getting mm-hmm. you in your seat. But now that it's over, let's talk about this closure. Talk about how it ended. I mean, you're right. It, it went full circle, mm-hmm. and the circle keeps going. Yeah, it definitely does. He didn't get the resolution that he wanted Mm -hmm. um, in being able to go home. He certainly didn't get resolution in sort of losing his friends, losing this young, young kid. I mean, even the guy that cast looked so young. My heart broke for it. So I think, but it was the way that it was meant to be ended. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have been true to the story, to the themes, to the point they were trying to make if they had resolved it for us. You know, I sound like a broken record if you've been following us along up until this point, but that's what wartime is, right? So it's it's never ending whether you're actively Mm. in war or you're not in war. And I think that uh, for me, this ending, he he resolved that this is what's going to be his life. And so instead of fighting against the current, which he's done up until this point, he realized that not only is he lucky to be alive, but he's the one that people look up to now. Because not only did he get promoted to, as a captain, but he's survived the longest. And he's no longer, you know, green under, under, underneath the ears. 
Um, and then the last thing I wanted to say about just the ending before he went back, he when he was in that small town and he was healing up, that's when he felt free. So mm-hmm. he thought he was out of the military. So that was his freedom. Like he may not have been back in life in America or wherever he's from, but he was in a small town in Italy. He thought he was meeting the girl. He was thought he, he thought he was having his happily ever after. And then you see the military truck come down and and I just thought that was so powerful. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned this point where like he is now the leader. And I think they did such a good job with conveying that emotionally of okay, people are now looking up to him. You have new guys coming in who are like this is my first mission. What do I do? Do you have any tips? And he almost is that older brother figure of, I've been here before. Let me help you out. Let me guide you. Uh, and accepting that role. And I think, again, that's that's peace. Yeah. They, he even called Snowden son, which mm-hmm. really stood out to me and was such a tender moment. And it was so contrasted with how he was. Remember... Uh, the beginning episode one he's so cynical he's giving <laughs> clevenger such a hard time mm-hmm. he's just busting everyone's balls i know back to the balls i apologize mm-hmm. but and then oh, thanks and then <laughs> to get to this point where he's able to embrace that now he can be the mentor it just was it that actually was more of a progress than some other aspects of this show, but it was such needed, valuable progress for in that, his character development. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think the, we'll talk about the, does Yo-Yo feel lucky to be alive in all this, oh. or does he almost wish he were dead? That's a tough question. I don't know. I think maybe it goes back and forth. I think he feels lucky to be alive. I think he realizes that he's one of the very few that has lasted this long, and so... He's lu- he feels lucky, but he also feels like it's a curse. So it's mm-hmm. it's a catch mm-hmm. twenty two. Well, I'm guessing when he was with uh, that Italian family and possibly having some you know romantic thoughts towards that, definitely having romantic mm-hmm. thoughts towards that girl. Lucky to be alive when George Clooney is inspecting him and his injury and poking with like a pencil. Pretty sure. The, the pain that I saw like in his soul, in his eyes in that moment, so degrading, may be different. Yeah, maybe but I different. think that was more of a pride thing. He was worried that he had no testicles he w- that, and, and trying to like explain to them in English. Like, no, when he was with George Clooney. When he, like, contrasting those moments, like when he was with that family, happy to be alive, like, enjoying life, then cut to a few minutes later in the show, he's with George Clooney, like, having to drop his pants and be inspected. Mm. Pretty sure that he was not <laughs> super thrilled with life yeah, in that particular That's moment. also a pride thing, though, right? Yeah. That's a pride thing, so. Uh, so we talked about the Italian girl, who, again, that was just such a great scene. Uh, uh, that is the, that honestly, I wrote down his note of like the the contrast because last episode we saw the the evils of war and like the conquest and now this episode you see the contrast of people meeting each other you have bringing cultures together people who don't know the same language but are still able to communicate see the best in one another i loved that that was so beautiful and then, obviously, with the girl, do you think if he had the choice, would he end up with her or with Scheitzkoff's wife? Oh, the wife. Don't you think? Yeah, the wife for sure. Because yeah. he was You dreaming, think so? He was dreaming about the wife and still having flashbacks of, of the wife, even mm-hmm. in this episode. Yeah. So when... He was like naked on the the cliff and dreaming about the wife. That was his ideal, and I think that even though they were having an affair, he actually really thought he loved her. Yeah, I agree with that. But I do think that there was something that he had been missing when he was with that that Italian girl and her family. Mm-hmm. That scene where he is being inspected by the doctor. There is that language barrier, but they're all around him. They're all worried and concerned Mm -hmm. about Mm -hmm. him and you know 
that's just something that not only has he not experienced with his own family for quite a long time, but it's very missing in his own community because everyone there, it's wartime, everyone's there surviving. There isn't that culture of like a familia the way that they experienced it there. And I think um, that was probably part of the reason he was so attracted to her is it felt comforting, it felt safe. It was very much reminiscent of the first couple episodes where he was in the brothel Mm -hmm. and it was again the old italian man who you know we're not going to win we're not going to lose we're going to be happy in the middle i think that's what he was feeling in that house and that's the only reason i look at it and i'm like i almost think he would choose staying there with that girl over choosing scheitzkoff's wife because there's other extenses that come extenses that's not the right word there's other circumstances that come with that of like you have to keep your relationship private you're back in the US I don't think he has great uh, respect for the US right now with the way they're handling this war so I almost think he would choose to stay there and the show did a great job then of bringing it back of not just having the military personnel come there but having RV walk in the door and it's just like you just bit your tongue Mm -hmm. you were snapped right back to reality yeah what did you think about that because i was shocked yeah i mean i think that like i mentioned earlier i think that it's really this scene and him finding this small town was really important he was Mm -hmm. definitely feeling nostalgic he was definitely feeling a sense of freedom and all of it make believe because he is in wartime so the way they shot it, the tranquility, the light-colored floral dresses, the family laughing, the family dinners, and the um, even the language barrier, like, uh, buongiorno, buongiorno, and all the surface happiness. It was just surface happiness, so I think it was really important that it was him, and the doom and the, the fear you saw he had as he saw the military coming back for a split second, he had the freedom that in his mind he's always wanted. And so it was definitely important that it was him and unfortunate because it snapped him back into reality. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I also think we saw the father of that young Italian girl sort of, mm-hmm. s- he was overstaying his welcome. <laughs> I don't, so I think that that would have been problematic had Arfi not crashed his way into his little paradise. Oh, the dad was never going to let that happen. No. No, no, there's no, no. no silly American going to be with my uh, beautiful Italian daughter. No, not, not a happening. chance. Does, you know, you talked, uh, I think you said, different between the, this and the book. How so? So, it, go ahead, because you're the book. Honestly, I, have, I can't speak to this. So, I read online, so I haven't finished the book, but I read online that uh, him going flying off into the sunset uh, at the very end, it differs to what happens Hmm. at the end of the book. So, guys, you can tell us in the comments below or shoot us a DM, whatever it is, or I could just read the book and find out myself. I'm so close to being um, there. How it ends and how he's just, you don't know if he's, how many more missions he has is a little bit different than what happens here. Yeah. There were there were a lot of things that they just didn't have time for yeah. in six episodes, which is why they need six to twelve more. I mean, that's so, what I said last just a episode. Couple more. I just said a they couple could. More. They could. The way they mm-hmm. left it hanging, they, they could. really, yeah, absolutely. I would have been interested, and I don't know if it talked about in the book uh, of knowing more about his family. Yeah, because is that what also attracted him to that Italian? Is when they having that long supper. And they're all just sitting there eating and the dad or someone, whoever, brings him over. And it's like, you're part of the family. So I don't know what his family life was back home. Uh, Is this something also totally new of having that joy and bond with more than just your significant other, but with the whole community? And obviously that also is the community that he doesn't have in the army anymore. So it certainly just made that more appealing. I want to talk about the the meaning behind the nakedness. You know, so I think that he probably partially legitimately cracked and just didn't care anymore. And I think part of it was also like, if the only way to get out of here is to be crazy, 
I will be crazy. <laughs> I will be absolutely crazy. But I don't think that it was just one or the other. I think that it was partial calculated sanity and partial like nervous breakdown. Yeah, I think that he definitely uh, cracked. I think that uh, given how long he's been there and because we know that the military is so strict and structured and he's been following the rules all this time in his tight uniform, doing everything that they say uh, he had to do, and it's not working out. So when Christopher literally died in his arms and the blood was all over his uniform, I think that was the moment where he cracked and... He was like, I'm not wearing this uniform ever again because it represents all the things that I thought this military is about, but it's not really about. So I'm just going to take care of me because I'm the only one that is able to. And so I think he just kind of went crazy a little bit and he's rebelling a little bit. Why did you think they had Christopher die in the spot that Yo-Yo put him? It was, it's his... A number of his worst fears, worst anxieties, and worst realities sort of all together in one. Yep. He doesn't like the senseless killing of his friends, all these young men, many of them younger than him. He's also been very fearful that he's going to die. Um, and and he's come, you know, every mission that he goes on, his chances of getting hurt go up. This was this kid's very first mission. He looked like he'd barely passed puberty. And so for him, it was a stark reminder of all the things that he's been afraid of and fighting this whole time. Mm -hmm. And just to jump on that a little bit, too, I wrote it down because I thought this was really important as well. So you have a boy willing to put himself in danger. He's barely out of school. He's 18 years old, and he's out there in danger wanting to liberate the world and then they all have that same dream that they're doing something special and liberating all these people and doing righting the wrongs and you know he dies in the spot that yo-yo puts him in which makes yo-yo feel like he's responsible and he also already feels responsible for the death of his other friends so that was his cracking point yeah absolutely i do think though and i just look at this for what i was telling myself this entire series of like your chances of dying don't go up with each mission they're the same every mi- like that's how i would rationalize it mm. of like i technically have the same chance of dying it's not like a a russian roulette thing where it's like someone's gonna get the bullet i think with this you what well, i was trying i was like what is the odds of dying every single day? this was literally i was asking myself i was like is it a 25 percent chance is it a 20 percent chance you die on every mission so it's been a while since i've taken statistics but mm-hmm. it's a different thing if you do russian roulette one time and then it passes back around to you the chances do go up oh really yeah i think so yep Really? If you're watching this, can someone please confirm this? I agree with you. Yeah. I, I, I do think I, I that think they I've go up. That before. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious on that. Yeah. Because, yeah, I just look at it and I was like, you, you, your odds reset every time. That's the way I was looking at it. I but see I your point, but the more times that you put yourself in front of the bullet, the more opportunity there is for that bullet to hit you. On the overall, yeah, grand scheme. Yeah. Yeah, but every single mission is the same, same percentage. It, it can't be the same percentage because you're not factoring the X factor that you can't control. So, Well, yeah, there's the plus or minus of, like, the danger when we talked about Bologna, I think. Yeah, that thing, Bologna had a higher risk because it was more dangerous. Mm -hmm. But just on a grant, like, every mission, you have a 20% chance. Maybe. Maybe I'm wrong. We're going to have to do some research. Let us know in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know in the chat. Let us know in the chat. What else do you guys see from this and and think, oh, obviously, we 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 came full circle on Yo-Yo. Mm-hmm. Who didn't we come full circle on that you're like, mm, man, I wish wish I would have known more about Cathcart or Scheitzkopf or Milo? Well, Milo obviously needs a spinoff show. Oh, 100%. Uh, right? I would 100% subscribe to that. Mm-hmm. I will host the panel. I'm all in. So um, I I kind of wanted to see more of Major, 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 Major. Yes. Because he sort of got his promotion, and then we didn't really see much of him after that. He just Last I saw him, he was painting his little yeah. boat. 
Yep. Oh no, he was in the office. The, remember, because they shared the yeah, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he That's actually looked like he was working. Yeah. Not probably not doing anything. Not probably doing yeah. very much. Um, I would have liked to see a little bit more, uh, not closure because that wouldn't have been true to the show, but Scheisskopf. Mm. And the wife dynamic. I want to know more about that. Mm -hmm. Something that was a character that came in late that I'm glad he was there and I had just enough was General Dreedle. Yes. He was Very hilarious. true. Yeah. He was hilarious. I thought mm -hmm. that was funny. The mm -hmm. commanding officer of everything European. That was totally really fine uh, with the nudity. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's seen it all, right? Yeah. He's seen it all, mm -hmm. been there, done that. I think that it's also important to uh, mention how the flashbacks between um, the parade and the the pinning of, yes. of the medals, because that was really important in my mind, too, because that helped us go full circle. Mm -hmm. So if you thought about what Scott thought was important, in the beginning, in the opening episode, what was important to him was this silly parade and making sure that all the degrees were the right degrees for when they were walking. <laughs> but really, all the other stuff was the important stuff that he never talked about and never um, explained to them. And the death and dying and destruction. And then fast forward, he's now in charge of them, episode five. And now he's meddling the guy that he hated the most and that's why I thought it was imp it, all of it it all comes for full circle is mm -hmm. what I'm saying yeah and so that was really important that they did that so we can see the absurdity of what we think is important when we think it's important in war times yeah they also came full circle on the they had some visions in the at the end of like the water scene yeah them on the dock and yep. beach day yeah I think it was definitely yeah it was a full circle mm-hmm Full yeah. circle show. I thought it was overall really good. I, yeah. well, okay, you got to grade it A, B, C, D, E. You can go e. plus minus. Did I say E? Yeah. E F. is that you. It's you. Like what E is? This? Yeah. America, we, do you guys do it differently? No. Here? Yeah, no, we don't. <laughs> okay. We don't. You can get an E for something, I think. E, e for is, effort. E for, yeah, there you go. E In for In elementary school, excellent. Yeah. A, or B, needs improvement. A, mm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I so, would rate it an E then. Excellent. Yeah, excellent. E for excellent. Yep, okay. And also an e, A. E plus or an E minus? Okay. E plus. E plus. A. What do you got? <laughs> I, I'm going to go with 100% uh, Rotten Tomatoes is what I read. So I'll go that direction and I'll yeah. say E for excellent. Yeah. I'm like a B. What? What was the thing that was missing for you? I think... I think I, w I wanted more, so I wish there was some closed mm -hmm. ends on, like, the Milo thing and, uh, you know, knowing more about some other characters. Again, I know that it, that's not merely the part of this, of the six. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I, started, I thought it started slow. I wasn't a big fan of episode one. I thought that... It, I, I understand the purpose of episode one. Mm. I understand the foundation, but it still just wasn't enjoyable. And it's one of six. I get like you can have that episode, I think, if it's mm. one of 10 or one of 12. Mm. But one of six, that's 18 percent. And so I wasn't a big fan of the first 18 percent. <laughs> So like I think that's I don't know it's not a C it's not mm -hmm. a D I enjoyed it I actually really enjoyed how it came full circle, um, and it's not you know I didn't just give it a B because of the balls, uh, although as a guy that hurt that was really really painful, uh, um, not B B plus I thought the cinematography which you had talked mm -hmm. about in previous episodes was good it was really good uh, I did enjoy the characters I enjoyed. Uh, shites cough but I you know if I give this here's the other thing it's like uh, if you guys do uh, I don't know if you follow the pizza reviews on Instagram do you know this Barstool Sports Dave Portnoy so he does pizza I'm going to use this example he does pizza reviews pizza places all across the country seems like a great job a great score is like an 8 anything over an 8 because if you give a pizza, like a nine and a half or ten, what happens if tomorrow you come across something a lot better? So I look at it and I say, I'm going to give this a B because there, there's been a lot better that I've seen. And I think those deserve A's mm. above 
the rest. I haven't seen anything that I have like full heartedly appreciated the art and the story and the craft and the development in a really long time. So I am sticking with my A. Mm. That's I great. loved it. Yeah. I, I do pilot reviews every week and I think that uh, we were actually going to do this, but because we were doing this, I were like, ah. Um, but I think overall I'm going to stick with my E excellent yeah. and, and my Rotten Tomato score. I think that they did a good job. I do want more. So if that was their intent, then I'm all in for yeah. sure. Awesome. I said this earlier, but I think this show is a career maker. I think this show, for a lot of these guys who had sort of small... I mean, obviously, Christopher Abbott, this is going to define mm -hmm. his career because mm -hmm. he was so wonderful in it. But for a lot of the guys who had sort of smaller roles, um, this is going to be you know, that, that gold star that's going to really launch a lot of their like bigger careers. And we'll see a lot of them, I think. I mean, now you get to be directed by George Clooney. Right? A couple episodes, so... You get to shoot on location in Italy with George. I want to give you guys a quote because I think it sums up what we're, we're saying. Mm -hmm. So, adaptation is interpretation. Interpretation, by definition, generates disagreement. So, no matter how well supported the reasoning, we may never understand just why you chose to like it, why I chose not to like it, or mm. vice versa. Um, and then it says here, you... You may choose to portray Oliver Twist as an 80-year-old woman or have Hamlet deliver his speeches backward. Whatever the case may be, it's an adaptation. So you're Very either going to love it or you're going to hate mm -hmm. it. There's no right or wrong. Very absolutely That's correct. Cool. We want to know what you guys think, by the way. So yeah. reply in the comments after you give us a thumbs up, which then takes like a minute. So go give us a thumbs up. Also, so much content here on After Buzz TV. We have an after show for every single show that you guys enjoy, whether that's on Stars or Showtime or regular TV or Netflix or Hulu or YouTube, the Cobra Kai, we had that on. And we have stars from all the shows come in here, showrunners, main actors, writers, people who are just on set who give you a new perspective that you've never seen before. So make sure that you go check out all of the other networks and shows that were you know, programming here on AfterBuzz's YouTube. I think there's probably about 15 different channels that you can go subscribe to. And don't worry, I know you're thinking, I'm going to subscribe and they're going to send me a bunch of emails. You control all that. So if you want us to notify you when we have really cool things, you can. If you don't and you just want to be able to just follow along, love that too. We just want your support. We give this content to you guys for free. Just make sure that you just show a little love. Just double tap on that subscribe button. That's all we want. And again, let us know uh, in the comments section of this video how you guys thought it ended. Were you really happy with how it ended? Were you like, yeah, I don't know. Did you want something else? Let us know. We will be replying to comments. And my favorite part of the show is we learn about our World War II hero. Oh. Special segments. <laughs> This is my Real favorite life part too. Heroes. Yeah. So, um, if you guys have been following along, you know that we uh, do an off-screen hero segment here. And to wrap up, this one is particularly touching. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, there is a photo up right now of Courtney Shankin. and Courtney was one of the half a million Jewish American. Uh, fighters that went abroad to fight during World War II. And he was also an NCAA champion gymnast at the University of Chicago, wow. who then enlisted in the um, Army Air Forces along with his twin brother Earl, which I think is really interesting. Usually family cannot fight alongside with each other. Um, and uh, So is this him himself or him and that's his twin brother? No, that's him as a gymnast, him as a pilot. Got it. Um, and so he and Earl, Courtney and Earl, went together. During the war, he was a B-24 navigator for the 722nd Squadron of the 450th Bomber Group. And he flew 50 missions. That wow. seems to be a number that mm -hmm. has come up on quite a few of our um, off-screen heroes. So anyway, he and his brother Earl bombed a bunch of airplane factories, tank factories, railroads, oil fields. He said that the sky was so black... Um, from all of the flack that they would mm -hmm. shoot at you. So I think they got that really correctly mm -hmm. um, 
in the show because some of those rounds. yeah so sometimes it was just so thick for yo-yo that it was just black all around him um but whenever missions took him over germany being jewish shankin said that he would remove the dog tags that identified him as a jew because he was worried that if his plane went down and they found him, uh, that he, it would yeah. be really, really problematic <coughs> for him. So, um, but he did not let his identification uh, stop him from from continuing to fight in the war. Mm. Um, other soldiers who were also Jewish have reported uh, flying over concentration camps like Auschwitz and not knowing what was directly beneath them and having oh, that be wow. really problematic once they learned down the line. Um, but anyway, Shankin uh, survived his 50 missions, returned home, and lived a nice, nice long life. He was actually recognized as the oldest surviving NCAA gymnastics champion. When, yeah, at the age wow. of 94, he actually passed away in 2015, but he he was a really accomplished uh, military man and athlete and wow. all around hero. So, That's um, awesome. Super yeah, cool. kind of an interesting bit of history. Never met a more manly knit man named Courtney. Right? I mean, I wouldn't. He has serious guns. I mean, to be a gymnast, yeah, your shoulders are rock. Yeah, and Boulder so shoulders. brave to be Jewish and flying over Germany during yeah. World War II. But that is true bravery. It's he. He knew that it was it needed to be done. You know, he knew that that again that was a service of the country to be able to keep other Jews who were back in America safe. Yeah, and so absolutely. props to him and props to everyone else. And again, if this is your first episode that you listen to, every single one of the six episodes after shows that we've covered have featured an incredible hero. So definitely go back and listen to all those. Uh, and they're just incredible. And they give you a new perspective of the problems that you might be facing in today's lives to hear what these guys want. I mean, 50 missions, you literally know that you have to take your dog tags off because if you get shot down, in Germany, you're going to face worse torture. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. And I like this, too, because it gives really good perspective on the show. Mm -hmm. And it also really justifies everything that, that the characters that we have come to love over six episodes, they went through the same mm -hmm. same sort of thing. So, um, Absolutely. Yeah. Pretty ama amazing guy. Only one more thing to do before we call it a night. The news and gossip. Guys, news and gossip is After really one. quick because I think we've wrapped it a lot. I just have three things. The first thing is the book spends a lot of time uh, in its characters' heads, and which is a little bit different than what you, you've seen in this mm -hmm. six-episode series. So uh, that keep that in mind if you guys decide that you are going to read the book. Um, all but a few of its chapters are named after a character, mm. which um, all the main characters that are in this show are main characters in Catch-22. So if you put two, those two together where you're in that person's head, if you want to dig deeper and you're feeling like you want more, definitely pick up the book and find out what's inside their head. Um, and moving on to some photos. I had to put this photo because I think this wrapped up everything of the series with um, Yo-Yo being naked in a tree and him kind of cracking and him looking out, pondering. So I thought it was really appropriate to end with that in News and Gossip. And then last but not least, we see um, George Clooney and Christopher Abbott on the cover of Variety magazine. And what I think is funny about this whole thing, because they're both gorgeous, talking about... <laughs> um, the new series, but if you look up top, guys, it says explosive letter diversity crisis at CBS. And you know that I've mentioned that this show has a bit of a diversity cri crisis, so kind of appropriate. Mm -hmm. That's it, guys. That's all the news and gossip I have. That's all the news and gossip. Man, they are two just good looking gentlemen. They aren't really they? are. They really are. They have screen presence even in a still photo. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, who also has a great presence? Both you ladies. <sighs> And I'm sure everyone watching is thinking that same thing and just thinking to themselves, where can I see more of these ladies? Well, for me, I'm Janine Doyon, and you can catch me across all social media at Janine Doyon. Guys, I'm Linda Entwee. All across social media, you can find me at Linda So Girly. And you can find me on Instagram and on Twitter at the only MC. This was only six episodes. We all want more. Maybe there will be another show, maybe there won't, but you can always interact with us if you have questions or you want to comment or, you know, talk with us about what we thought even more. Go find us on social media. It's just that easy. A wonderful world we live in. Everything's on a phone. Thank you guys for watching this entire series of Catch-22, Hulu's 
limited series on AfterBuzz TV. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.